Okay. How's everyone doing? Just uh, dreaming a little bit about warm weather and, uh, and dry fly season coming up. And uh, one of my favorite uh, hatches to fish is the salmon fly. And, um, and I've got two flies that I would uh, say are at the top of my list. And they both have two of the same uh, reasons that they, that they really are good. And they sit really low in the water. And the one I'm going to tie for you today is the Dornan's Water Walker. And uh, in this fly you can see has a super low profile. The legs are still going to pop all over the place in the water. But it's going to sit really close. And the other thing that this thing does besides sit in the water line is uh, it may not look like it but it's pretty visible. This uh, this wing that on is sit sitting on there you just you see it. It's a large fly so um, I don't have any problem uh, seeing this fly um, and fish just flat eat it. And the second fly um, that I wanted to mention is a sunken stone. And this fly is like uh, it's like six or six or eight elk hair caddis combined. You're going to put a little egg sac off the back um, and this is just a pair of posts that I use and then uh, I'm tying with an amber body on that and uh, and basically uh, once you tie one wing in you know get some get some deer hair that flares really well um, or elk hair and uh, some of these patches that you'll see right here come from blue ribbon flies in West Yellowstone and for whatever reason, I, they're, they're the best when it comes to, um, you know, purchasing deer here. I've uh, bought a lot online, and I've learned that it's worth taking the drive to, to go to a shop that has a really good selection of, uh, of deer here. You'll know when you get it and you cinch down on it whether it flares. And if you're tying comparadons or anything, I can't recommend enough. Uh, the hair that they have here really flares well, and is uh, is amazing. So. Anyway, um, yeah. So these are these are my two favorite patterns for for salmon fly. I'm just been thinking about it um, lately, getting out there, and I can't wait to uh, see the big heads come up and eat these guys. So with that said, um, tying the Dornan's uh, water walker does require a little bit of prep, and I'll show you. Something. All right. So one tip I would um, highly recommend if your wife has a nice. Uh, sewing uh, setup you can steal it or if uh, you find something online that, that works better but uh, something that has some lines on it with a, with a straight edge and then a, a sharp uh, cutter um, will allow you to kind of get your um, pieces of foam into I guess uh, the same shapes and sizes for so you get some consistency in your flies and so what I've done is I've cut up the wings on this fly and I've cut up a whole bunch of bodies and then some of these uh, strike indicators uh, as well that you can just uh, press out and this uh, hard surface below it helps so you're not cutting into your your wife's hardwood table or something like that but uh, anyway uh, it's uh, it's a lot slower if you try to put all this together um, with each fly but if you set it up and you start and you cut all your wings and you cut all your bodies and all your strike indicators and then for this one as well, there's a whole bunch of legs that you're gonna need. You're gonna need four of these legs, basically, that are kind of tied together. And, uh, and then uh, um, one in the middle, you'll see when, we get, when we're tying it, um, that helps. All right, so some of the materials we're gonna be using today, we're using a uh, Daiichi 2X long, uh, I think 1X fine uh, dry fly hook, and uh, gonna be using uh, the body material amber uh, scud dub which uh, probably isn't the easiest to dub but it's uh, I think pretty close color to what the salmon fly has something that matches in terms of thread and uh, and then we're gonna be using some foam we've got some uh, dark gray two millimeter we've got some 0.5 millimeter for the wings here um, Let's see what else we're missing here, and then we're going to throw some strike indicators on there. These are just bright two millimeter foam tips, and we're going to be popping some legs on there, which are just uh, kind of silly legs. I forget the exact name of them, but they're uh, something you'd put on like a patch rubber legs, uh, you know, basically uh, these legs right here. All right, so let's get started. Get the hook in the vise. Alright, 
Looks like we're focused okay. And we're just going to start by dubbing the body all the way through. Going to get a little bit more light. Hopefully it doesn't... Uh... Not for you, that one's for me. <laughs> Even though it's a big fly, um, I still use magnification. All right. So, like I said, we're just going to dub the body. It's not a super hard fly to tie, but uh, some of the prep work that you saw earlier helps to, to make it a little bit easier. So, we're just going to crank the body. Just keep spinning this. This stuff doesn't spin on very easy. Some people throw some wax on there to help. Probably should, but it uh, takes me time to go pick it up. Anyway, and uh, just keep cranking it forward, and then we're gonna we're gonna bring it all the way back. Uh, doesn't have to be ridiculously thick, um, but this is where we're gonna start to get the uh, foam on there in just a minute. And uh, before we do, what we're gonna set up here is uh, we're gonna go for a little bit of glue that will help the foam sit in place and we're gonna sit it right about there grab one of our strips that we cut earlier and uh, we're gonna set it so it just goes a little bit past the, the bend of the hook um, and like I said we're gonna put some some glue across the top alright once this sits in there it's better to probably be a little bit long than short because it's tough to get it back off once you set that in there. All right, and then we're gonna lash that down, and uh, just so I don't have to bring it all the way through the um, the body, I'm just gonna whip finish it right here. Just two of them by hand. All right. So that's out of the way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna restart the thread up front. We're gonna set your, your nose in there. All right. It's obviously way too much, so we'll get it out of our way. Maybe we'll sneak another fly out of that piece. And uh, we'll get our tips trimmed. Square that one off. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to wrap back. We're going to pop in some of the wings and legs. And um, this I actually didn't mention this earlier. It's just some really micro braid flash that we put in there under the wing. I've already got a chunk cut off, so we're going to lay that in there. And uh, what I've been doing is just a drop of the super glue. You don't need a lot there. It just takes a second. Instead of that thing flaring and knocking up that uh, wing, one of the things I really like about this wing is the low profile. Chubbies are nice, but uh, if you've ever looked at a chubby, the way they stick up, they're, sometimes they're used as a strike indicator. Um, they're good flies. They catch a lot of fish. But I don't like the way they sit up really high and uh, like I said, sometimes if you get fish that have been pounded by um, stoneflies and salmon flies, I think, I just feel, and this is confidence, everything's about confidence when you're talking about these um, these flies, and, and if, you, if you're not confident in them, then and it, and it's a mess. So I, sometimes if they're too bushy, it doesn't look real natural to me, and I have a problem with it, and I, I'm sure the fish see it too, just based on what I've seen. What I'm looking for here is I'm trying to set the the legs so they point down. So that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to reach right there. I'll just trim those tips off. We're gonna basically at the end we're gonna cover over everything that you do here. So um, if these tips are sticking up a little bit, that's fine. So again, I'm looking for my um, legs to point down. I'm gonna give it a few wraps. I'm gonna cut tips. I'm gonna put one straight across. This one doesn't have any knots or anything on it. If you've ever seen a salmon fly, most of their legs are up in that top third of the 
of the bug. And that's what we're doing here. All right. All right. There's another set. And then uh, I'm going to pop the other set kind of walking forward. Pointing down just like the other ones. That one's kind of sliding. And sometimes you just got to play with them a little bit to get them to, to ride. The foam will, will kind of mess with it a little bit. Um, there we go. That's what I was looking for right there. All right, we'll trim that off. All right, and these things, like I said, they're all pre-prepared, so it makes this fly go a lot faster. And uh, same thing, other side. Want those babies pointing down. Sometimes you can just reposition it like that, and it will it will work for you. And move it. And uh, all right, so those are our legs, and what we're going to do next is we're going to get that wing in place, and we cut those wings really thin stuff. This stuff is is super visible, and uh, and just pretty happy with the way it uh, works and I'm just looking for the, the right length here that I need and uh, it's probably even a little bit too long alright alright what I do is I lay them forward first. Just watch your legs. Make sure we don't lose the the shape that we were shooting for there. All right, so your your legs are in, your wings in, and what I've been doing is just uh, you can kind of see some of the uh, the wraps um, show a little bit there. It is the same color thread for the most part, but I'm gonna throw a little bit more dubbing in there just to make it look a little bit better and probably for us more than anything. Probably that orange color right there would uh, be exactly what the natural would look like, to be honest, because they have that. All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring the thread back into that middle slot. Don't want a lot of turns there if I can help it. And uh, we're gonna watch the legs, like I said. That's it. Kind of covers it all over. And uh, all right, what we're gonna do is uh, sometimes I'll put a drop, not a lot, just a drop is enough to keep these guys lined up the right way. And I'll put a drop on the top here. That's for the indicator. Watch your legs again. All right, getting towards the end. What I do is just pop it up in the front there, and, uh, and just watch your watch your legs, especially with all this super glue running all over the place. You don't want to pin it up in the wrong place and not see that it happened. And uh, sure that that's what's going on there now. All right, double whip finish. Get that out. Check our legs. Everything's running in the right direction. And uh, I'm looking for about that for my length. And we'll shape those. And we're done. That is. Uh, a bomb. You'll see this in a lot of guides boxes. They, uh, they know it works. And that's it. Dornan's Water Walker. Really sweet bug. Finally, we're going to finish up with a couple clips of a couple nice trout we caught in the Madison River during the salmon fly hatch this summer.